Hi all, I have another interesting recent game. This is from the Tal Memorial Rapid Tournament of 2018. Vishy Anand with the white pieces playing against Mamajarov. Uh, so we have e4 for Vishy. A French defence from Mamajarov. d4, d5, knight c3, the winner variation, advanced winner. c5, a3. Now usually black takes on c3. This is an interesting alternative which has actually been mentioned to me by my good friend Alex Aflontis, who's a, a great French defence player. So it can take white by surprise. Here, this is a popular line, a popular idea, b4. C takes, knight b5. So this has all been seen before. White is quickly pouncing into the d6 square. I believe Timan, Jan Timan, uh, used to play this system quite a bit. Uh, bishop c7, hitting the e5 pawn. f4, bishop d7. White takes that dark square bishop, queen takes, knight f3. And now usually knight e7 is played here. For example, bishop d3, bishop a4, this has been seen before. We get a slightly different uh, move order. We get bishop a4 immediately. And it seems as though there would be nothing wrong with bishop d3 here to protect the c2 pawn. We have the more interesting looking rook a2. Is it controversial that the rook's on a2 here? Or can it just swing later somewhere useful um, so we'll see knight e7 knight takes d4 a6 so protecting that b5 square for a moment bishop e3 knight bc6 bishop d3 knight takes d4 bishop takes d4 and then bishop b5 so trying to get rid of that perhaps more dangerous bishop is often more dangerous uh, so the rook on a2, though, still seems a bit weird at the moment. Uh, white castles. Now, knight f5, locking down any f5 from white in advance. Bishop f2. Uh, we have now h5, so that the knight can't be pushed away with g4, it would seem. So now a4. Yes, I guess that justifies the rook still being on the a file to push through for a4. Bishop takes d3, c takes. Rook c8, black marks out the c-file before white has a chance for rook c2 there. So delaying castling, this is more to the needs of the position. Make sure that the c-file is controlled here. a5, locking down some dark squares. Now again, if black castles, well, if he castles here, there's queen takes h5, in fact. So, uh, But if he plays g6, protecting that to try and castle, it seems white can insert bishop c5 here. And this would be quite pleasant. Saying d4, rookie one, white's doing quite well there. So actually, in this position, again, black doesn't bother with g6 even uh, as a preparation of casting, but immediately plays d4, which stops this bishop c5. It would seem that that's like the main reason one, one could conclude for d4 here. Uh, it marks down that d3 pawn as well, clamps down on it. Rook a1. Okay, now queen d7 is played. Queen f3, and now a very interesting move. Queen d5, offering the exchange of queens, and not minding the double pawns in the center. Queen takes d5. Uh, it's no good, it seems, to leave that queen on d5. For example, this position, white's only going to be uh, uh, even. Even black can even sacrifice the h5 pawn as an example, and and really dominate the position here. This this is this is, can't be permitted. Then the bishop's pinned to g2. This really can't be permitted. And white's best might actually be to trade queens here. And black's just got a fantastic game there. So white, uh, after queen d5, actually took the queens off. And it seems black's really uh, succeeded in his opening uh, novelty uh, for that you know the more unusual bishop a5 in, in the advanced winner. Because it seems a really quite a pleasant position. Rook fc1, the black king doesn't need to castle. Guess what uh, is played? Okay, king d7. Yeah, the black king doesn't need to castle. That's a quicker route to get to the center. So sometimes castling does have a slight <laughs> downside when the end game is, is there already. Bishop e1. You want the king, you know, so usually you want the king towards the center as, as the end game approaches when it's safe enough. Now f6, so threatening to really weaken this pawn with taking in king e6. So white doesn't want to leave a liability now on e5. He takes that, g takes, 
king f2 so the white king is coming to the center but knight e3 black's pretty comfortable uh, here knight c2 and this actually gets rid of with that fork black gets rid of the bishop on e1 which means actually now this is now possible because the bishop was also protecting against rook c3 so perching on c3 hitting d3 now white could try and keep steady here it seems uh, with rook d2 this doesn't seem like the most ambitious move ever but apparently this should be an even position still now Vichy goes for more he takes a risk a conscious risk uh, and plays rook a e2 so he's sacking that pawn uh, so here now it's dangerous with rook e7 that's parried for a moment with rook h7 now a very interesting idea again b5 trying to blast through the b file this time a takes rook b2 so trying to blast through to the b file to say b7 king c6 check king c5 rook b6 now uh, a very interesting uh, defensive move is played here and attacking rook a3 which means that the king could come to c3 without rook b3 being a problem uh, white takes on f6 instead so for example if rook 6 takes here the king can just glide towards the c3 square without concern and we've still got this dangerous uh Namajara have still got this dangerous pawn here so rook takes f6 was played d3 yeah black seems to be having a better end game which is what a lot of french defense players relish the better end game so king d4 check rook takes b5 rook d7 getting behind that passed pawn that other one check king d4 rook c1 check against the white king d2 hitting the rook king d3 rook e6 as a rook e3 check is is going to be very handy because uh, then there might be some possibilities of taking on d2 for example on rook e2 just just to show you uh what i mean um let's just give black a token move say check i think here rook takes d2 looks on for example rook e2 check so anyway this this whole idea is ruled out because black actually plays uh d4 and now is really it seems you know this is going to be more dangerous at some point uh a king coming to c2 so but for the moment uh there's with the rook on the e5 i think there's always king e2 at the moment but white plays f6 but here now uh there's a stronger alternative for black in this position can you guess what black plays here instead of moving the king black plays if i give you five seconds rook a3 which means uh yeah it spells disaster for white here the game actually ended let's see uh why uh well if f7 we just take uh if yeah white's in a little bit of trouble here basically uh because it's a sort of zugzwang if the rook moves off the file then this check can't really be answered because of rook e3 check so the rook has to be on on the file here uh so this is this is almost a bit uh zugzwangy uh this position uh so if king f4 king c2 uh this is just hopeless because black's just mopping up the pawns so yeah it's it's a very very difficult position it's it looks uh lost here and this is where vichy resigned now this is actually the only game uh vichy lost in the Tal memorial but uh, i thought i should give some credit to member jarov because he came second uh in this tournament so a very very dangerous rapid player and one who obviously also did really well actually well not obviously later in the candidates tournament of 2018 so i thought it was it was interesting to bring up this game uh so i hope you got something out of it and maybe try this french defense line out yourself if you play the french defense with bishop a5 maybe it hasn't occurred to you but it is a bit of a secret weapon in the french defense okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much